Hello, this is Secondary Data Analysis, brought to you by students from Yakov University, and today we would like to look at a study on vaccination efficacy. What is a vaccine, and how can we define vaccination efficacy? First off, a vaccine is a biological preparation that improves immunity for a particular disease. We use the term vaccination efficacy to capture the capacity of the vaccine to produce the intended effect, which is to immunize. So why do we immunize? Well, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, diseases are becoming rare due to vaccinations. Therefore, they keep immunizing until the disease is eliminated in order to protect us in the future. On the other hand, some challenges on vaccine efficacy have been raised by a number of scholars in recent years. For example, the Pasteur Institute, a French non-profit foundation dedicated to the studies including biology and vaccines, observed that 98% of the immune responses triggered at the early stages are not specific. This non-specific response means that the innate or natural immune system accounts for 98% of early response to an infectious agent, while the memory-based response that vaccination seeks to stimulate represents only 2% of early response. Moreover, we notice another opposing implication of immunization arising. In order to make sense of them, let's look at some contextual statistics. We decided on a graph prepared by Dr. Oban Sawin in 2009. It shows most markedly the dramatic decline of measles and scurvy in the UK at the start of the 20th century. However, only in 1965 was measles vaccination introduced after a huge percentage of these diseases had already gone down. It is important to mention that scurvy is a deficiency in vitamin C rather than a disease, which underwent a similar trend to measles. This graph gives some merit to the suggestion that in the last century, vaccines may statistically have little to do with the related disease reducing incidence and mortality rates due to an already declining trend prior to their introduction. However, to what extent does this implication hold weight today? In other words, how does the vaccination coverage correlate with the incident of the AIM disease? In this study, we will analyze the relationship between the coverage of the measles vaccination and the reported incidence of measles from 1980 to 2012. The countries we chose for this study are the United States of America and the United Kingdom. We access data from the World Health Organization. It is the authority for health issues within the United Nations system, associating 193 countries and over 8,000 public health experts. The measles vaccination was chosen because it has been widely adopted by the world, and the disease itself is highly contagious, so we can better define the effectiveness of the vaccination. Moreover, being one of the most universal diseases, its data is more accessible for us to obtain. The main variables are the vaccination coverage and the incidence of measles. Our variables also contain two countries, the United States of America and the United Kingdom, as we are interested in developed countries whose data is highly accessible. We also have the specific time period, namely from 1980 to 2012. Our data analysis starts in 1980 due to the availability of data before 1980 being limited and inaccessible. After conducting a simple correlation analysis for the United States, we can see that there is a negative correlation between incidence and coverage. The correlation is not extremely strong, but it shows to be statistically significant. Here is a scatter plot, which can reveal the relationship between incidence and coverage for the United States. As you can see with the line of best fit, the general pattern seems to be that as vaccination coverage increases, incidence of measles decreases. This graph can give you a better image, which shows that the coverage for each year slowly increases, the incidence decreases, except for the extreme outlier. 
This is the general pattern for the United States. We then proceed to conduct a linear regression analysis in which we used incidence as our dependent variable and coverage and year as the independent variables. After analysis, we found that it is significant with a p-value of 0 0.005. But the percentage of variability that can be explained is 0 0.2. This is a practical significance of 20%, which would be low. Finally, it has a negative beta, which means as one predictor goes up, the other goes down. So as coverage goes up, incidence starts to go down, which will result in the negative slope. A correlation analysis has also been done for the United Kingdom. We can see that there is a very strong negative relationship between measles incidence and vaccination coverage. The correlation also shows to be extraordinarily statistically significant. A scatter plot of the correlation demonstrates the negative slope of the relationship between incidence and vaccinations in the United Kingdom. Again, this graph gives us a better picture of what is happening. You can see that as vaccination coverage increases, the incidence of measles decreases. For the United Kingdom, we can see that a regression analysis shows to be extremely statistically significant. Furthermore, the independent variable is able to predict. The analysis has a relatively high practical significance, with a p-value of 0, an adjusted r-squared value of 0 0.778, and a negative beta. This second analysis gives an even stronger relationship between vaccination coverage and measles incidence in the case of the UK showing the decrease in incidence as coverage increases. So for our general conclusion of the analysis, we have found that both countries illustrate the negative correlation for vaccination coverage and incidence of measles, and both correlations are statistically significant. The general pattern is that over the years, as vaccination coverage increases, the incidence of the measles decreases. Finally, the negative correlation for the United States is not very strong, whereas the negative correlation for the United Kingdom is much stronger and more significant. In relevance to the conflict of information given at the beginning, we can conclude that for the period analysed, the vaccines seem to have had the intended effect.